What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. It's your man's Nicholas. Big dogs, got to eat fantasy football. I am joined today since it is Monday. Every Monday we do these behind the scenes interviews, interviewing an influencer in the fantasy football industry, in the space, uh, to really kind of peel back the cover and talk about the industry from a marketing, a business, a, a branding standpoint. And today I'm joined by Jay Cubman, the creator of the Fantasy Headliners YouTube channel with over 28,000 subscribers. You could find them on Twitter, F-N-T-S-Y, Fantasy Headliners. And the channel is the same thing on YouTube. Um, so, Jake, we are uh, very, very, very excited to have you. And I know every time I have other YouTube guys on, all of my audience kind of knows what's going on. Sometimes I'll have guys that are very popular on, on Twitter on, and I think my audience doesn't really know them, and it kind of comes as a surprise to me. So I'm assuming a lot of our audiences overlap because the YouTube community kind of, you know, sticks with one another. So uh, thank you for joining me today, man. I'm very much looking forward to the uh, to the chat and uh, kind of give give the audience a little bit of a background of yourself. What do you got going on in the in the fantasy football industry and uh, some of your your experiences and whatnot? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you. You know, first of all, having me on. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I've, I've followed your videos. I've followed your channels before I even started my own. I mean, this is kind of like. It's kind of you know weird to, to be talking to you, which is great because like you said, I think when you're on YouTube together, you kind of have a way that you, you just understand each other. Uh, I've seen your name pop up in my comment sections of my videos before. I, I I think the way I found this was somebody in your comment section, and it's just it, it's a great way to mingle. It's a great community to be a part of, and it's something that I'm very blessed to be a part of. It's uh it's definitely been a blessing here the past year, year and a half or so for for me. It's 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 grown very quickly. But it's very, very enjoyable. I'm looking forward to what the future holds for both of us. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, you said you have kind of been following my channel before you even started your own channel. So that was, uh, I think I've had my channel for maybe two and a half, three years or something like that now. How far back does your interest in fantasy football, the game, kind of go back to? Are you are you like an OG? Have you been playing since the days when you had to write down numbers and stats and stuff? I'm not quite that old, okay. but uh, I'm definitely a little bit on the older side for, for a lot of people here in the industry. And I've, I've been playing since about 2000, so right around 18 years I've been doing fantasy football. Uh, it's something I've always had a, a love for. I've done fantasy baseball and fantasy football since then, and and I've always been like uber competitive, like I hate to lose. And I, I would always just dive into it, and I would try to find whatever ways possible, whatever formulas I could find, just to try to make them work. And I've kind of just taken 18 years worth of – useless knowledge at the time and just kind of applied it to something that is beneficial not just for me but hopefully for other people too yeah i hear you so it's been a long long journey um it's been a long journey i guess of you consuming information and whatnot and it, it's funny because now as i said you know you have over twenty eight thousand subscribers almost i think three million views on your channel collectively those are massive numbers, and it might not seem like it maybe to you, um, because once you're in it, it kind of just seems like the norm, like that's just who you are and what you are at the time. But those are big numbers, and you said you started your channel after mine, and those subscriber count numbers are bigger than mine. And I hesitate to say that anyone has reached, you know, uh, success or kind of blew up overnight, but your 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 growth and your platform grew very, very quickly. But I understand how much work goes into the back end because you had to put in, you know, a year of really grinding and really working hard just to um, have the chance for that to happen, right? So, yeah, so I mean, yeah. So take me through that. Like, what do you contribute this massive growth to? Because I actually have some of the numbers here. I looked on the site Social Blade and you could look at different channels and see how they grew. And as of this time last year, on February 1st, you had about a 1,000 subs. So anyone out there, that thinks it's going to take you years and years and years. And it might, but it might not. You know, you never know what's going to happen if you put your hard work into something. You had 1,000 subs to your YouTube channel a year ago. By mid-October, you were up to 25,000 subscribers. I, I just, I need to hear, like, what is the secret? What am I doing wrong? What are you doing right? I don't think it's anything that you're doing wrong. I mean, I am very, and I will openly admit this live here on the internet, I am OCD, almost <laughs> to a fault. Uh if I'm going to do something, I'm going to kind of obsess with it. And I spend hours upon hours of taking like some type of online tutorials of how to learn internet SEO and search engine optimization and, and the keyword part, because I did this last year and I just didn't see the results. And I didn't want to just say, uh, I didn't make it. I'll 
figure something else out. I wanted to figure it out, and, and I've studied a lot of other channels. I mean, I've watched numerous other channels out there, and one thing that I really saw, uh, you know, by studying all these different types and personalities is there wasn't a whole lot of fantasy football out there that was really, like, fun to watch. It was kind of getting a little dry. It was just kind of getting a little... And eh, it was kind of boring. You'd sit there for an hour and listen to a couple guys talk, and that would be about it. And, and I was finding myself to get a little bored with it, so I'm like, i got to change something. I, I I know the way the world works now. Nobody has – I'm not going to say nobody, but a lot of people don't have an hour just to sit there and watch one video. They want to get their information, and they want to go. Uh, and so for me, taking a little bit from each channel – trying to give it my own personality and have fun with it. I mean, I goof off a lot on my channel. I have a lot of fun, do a lot of nicknames. I mean, make fun of a lot of people. Nothing to the point of getting on a personal level, but I'm trying to make it fun and interesting, and I'm trying to shorten the time. Uh, I found out, for me personally, that if I can keep these videos less than 15 minutes long and pack in as much information as I can in a short amount of time, the people are more likely to watch it because they know that they don't have to sit there for an hour to get whatever information they need and it's it's a lot of things. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of channels go out there and they'll do like a start sit, which is great if you're covering five or six guys, but you may not cover the audience that is watching your your show. Give them what they want. So I cover every team, every week, every player, all the main players, and I keep it all within about a 30-minute time frame. And I mean, by the end of it, I'm dripping sweat. You know, what I mean? it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I can't I can't even you know swallow hardly. I haven't had a drink of water in 30 minutes, and it's just. But that's what the people want, and if that's the sacrifice, which is very minimal sacrifice, in yeah. order to give the people what they want, I, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to keep out, you know, keep finding ways to improve. I was very much not uh, mechanically inclined or technically inclined with any of this when I started. To be completely honest, my wife came to me one day and was like, "You should probably like try to go on YouTube and and, and try this. You talk about sports all the time," and I'm like, "I've never even been in front of a camera before." <laughs> And what the hell am I supposed to do? And at first you could tell, and I'm not going to go out there and encourage anybody to go see some of my first videos because they are <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> They're embarrassing. But picking up little things as we go, one of the, the main things, and you mentioned the growth overnight. I had one video uh, that I guess it was semi-fantasy football viral. But if you watch it, like I had a green screen behind me, but I didn't even green screen anything with it because I didn't know what I was doing. You know what I mean? It's just getting out there and – and having fun and making a connection with the public is, is the biggest thing. I think like the first point is that you said you really had no technical inclination on how to do any of this stuff. And I think us, especially in the fantasy space, you could see, I, I mean, there's really like five or six channels that are popular on YouTube and fantasy outside of like, you know, like ESPN and, and the very mainstream networks who just throw up a YouTube channel and, and obviously their numbers just grow. But for guys like us, um, you know, my channel, your channel, fantasy football advice, the footballers are kind of getting to that bigger platform and, and, and those kind of channels. Uh, no, none of those people really started as someone who knew what they were doing, right? It's just something that you kind of figure out, uh, along the road. And it's just something that you have to be super, super passionate about to, to get by. Now you said like when you first started, um, y your wife told you that you should do a YouTube channel based on this. That's really interesting. Like why, um, first of all, you know, I, the way I always think about things are, 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 are is this, right? <clears throat> if you want to build uh, like a brand or a following, whatever it is, around your passion, you have to obviously have a message based on that passion. You have to be able to give out value around that passion and you have to have a way to give it to the audience, right? Whether it's video, whether it's podcast, audio, or whether it's written. And that depends solely on who you are as a person. Uh, so as someone who you said, like, you've never been on camera before, I personally hadn't been really either, but I was super comfortable when I turned on the camera for whatever reason. Like, why, why do you think your wife told you to do YouTube rather than like a blog or, or a podcast or whatever? And, and like, how hesitant were you to do that? Well, I, I know at the time, and this was probably about two years ago, a little over two years ago, she was working with somebody who had started up a YouTube channel and it was ridiculously, you know, popular, had to do with gaming and and she brought it home and talked about it. I'm like, that would be great if I could talk about sports. The problem is I have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, I think she knew me well enough to know that I'm, if I'm going to try it, I'm going to, like I said, obsess over it. And, and it's exactly what happened. As soon as I did that first video and I watched it back and, and kind of got a feel for things and just began to get more comfortable over time. And like I said, I obsessed over videos of you know how to do this. What type of lighting do I need? 
I mean, for the whole first year, even my first videos that blew up overnight, I mean, there was no decoration. It was a white wall behind me. Like, I, I didn't do anything. I was just trying to get my face out there and for me to get comfortable with it. And I think in that time, I made a connection with the viewers because they realized that I'm not some guy out here preaching that I'm some expert that knows more than anybody else. Uh, I'm never going to be that guy. I Yes, I may you know, research a lot more than the average person, but that's kind of what our job kind of is. That's why people are watching us to put in those extra hours. And, and I think I just made that connection with the viewers, you know, early on in the beginning of the season this year. And, and it's something that the carried momentum has just continued, you know, all year long. And it's been great. Yeah. That goes pretty much to the point that like everyone who comes on to these shows eventually gets like the authenticity point. And I think that I get a lot of comments like that, like, Oh, it's really refreshing to see someone who's just like, talking as if they were with me, right? Like we're in a bar, we're in a, a coffee shop or whatever. Like literally right before you and me just turned on the camera, I had to like move my garbage can out of the way because I don't want that in the back, even though I think I still see it back there. Uh, but you know, you, you talk about, well, actually I had a question. Do you watch your videos back after you make them or post them? Uh, not as much as I used to okay. now, kind of, I mean, I'll watch them as I'm editing them. Uh, we kind of joked about this before we started too. A lot of people don't know what all goes into making one of these videos. It looks super easy. Yeah, the guy sat on a chair for 10 minutes and he talked about football and he shut his camera off and put it on YouTube. And I wish it was that easy, but there's a lot more that goes into it. So I kind of watch it as I'm editing it. Uh, but I, I, I like to be real. Like you said, if I make a mistake, whether I mispronounced something or whatever it was, as long as it's not like a, a statistical mistake where I'm giving out bad advice, I leave it in there. Yeah. Uh, I want people to realize that I'm just a normal guy. You know, this is something I have a passion for and something that I'm going to, to try to, you know, excel at, but I'm no different than a lot of people that are watching the videos. I'm just trying to, to brighten a day if I can. There's so much negative out there and, and it got so to the point where like, man, is there anything good to just watch? Just where I can sit down for 15, 20 minutes, have a laugh, hear some football and, and feel like I'm a part of it. And that's what this is. I, I built a, a channel based around the community to try to give everybody a place to come for just a, a positive outlook, you know, just a place to come have some fun. And you mentioned just being a guy like everyone else is kind of watching. And, and like, I can't get this point across enough that like everyone that you see, all the people in the audience that watch these channels, like we are all just like normal people that do the same thing that you did. We're probably consuming content to the point where they're like, you know what? I feel like I have value to add. So, you know, if, if you want to start something like go, there's, there should be nothing holding you back. There's nothing worse than, than regretting not doing it. Cause I know had I not started my channel, that's something I would look back on and be like, fuck, I wish I had, you know, I wish I had done that. And you know, I want to circle back on, you said making your video short was something that you think really helped you grow. I think that's definitely, definitely true. I think that's something I wish I had like incorporated more into my content style, I guess, but all my videos do come out to like 45 to 60 minutes. And I don't know, it, it, I think it's just my style of giving off analysis and it kind of sucks because I go so deep to a point where it's probably like a lot of people do leave comments and are like, dude, you're going on for too long, like get to the point. And I'm like, whatever, man, it's not for you if you don't want to get that deep into it. So I, I do think it's about finding your style and figuring out which way you want to give out, whether it's to be, you know, to grow your subscriber count or to be very niche. Cause you can be, you could be the first person if you wanted to start tomorrow and be the first person who does two hour videos on YouTube. I don't think a lot of people would like it, but you would be known as the guy who does, you know, two or three hour videos on YouTube. So I think that's definitely something, um, that, that you had in your favor. What, what are your thoughts on like, uh, like thumbnails and, you know, the titles and keywords and things like that? Like how important, uh, of, a, of a role do you think that played in your growth i, I want to say a huge part like I, I am very obsessive about the thumbnails i'm trying to find a way to catch the eye because for people who have have any familiarity with youtube i mean us as content creators really want to show up in the suggested video side of a video that's where we're going to get the bulk of our views we want you know, these big channels, like you mentioned with the, the fancy footballers, we want to show up as a suggested video on one of their videos. That's what we're trying to do is the, the smaller the smaller guys trying to grow. Mm -hmm. and, and if our thumbnail can stand out, uh, I've mentioned keywords in, in studying like internet SEO. That is huge, huge. On, on YouTube. And I don't think a lot of people utilize that. And I use a tool called TubeBuddy. And I don't know if that's something you'll, you're familiar with if you use it on your channel or not. And not so much is it something where I use to get my keywords, 
but I can go on other channels' videos and I can see what keywords they used and what worked for them and what got them views and then try to incorporate incorporate that into to my videos and, and the subjects that I'm talking about because that's the only way you're going to show up in YouTube. If you go out there, you know, you come and make your first video and you put it out, you're not going to get anybody to really watch it. I mean, there's so many different things that go into this algorithm that people talk about on YouTube that it's not just as easy as putting a video out and you're going to get views. It's going to take time. There's a method to the madness of how you're going to get views pushed your way. And keywords and thumbnails, I think, are, are right up there towards the top. Yeah, if, if you're going to start a YouTube channel, like one of the biggest things to understand is that YouTube is owned by Google. Google is a search engine. YouTube is a search engine. So like one of my biggest mistakes, I know personally, the first summer that I was like, you know what, I'm going to really do this seriously and I'm going to put out a ton of content and hopefully, you know, see what happens. I did uh, like a, a team outlook pretty much for every single NFL team. And I did a video on them and like I did a long video like I normally do 45 to 60 minutes on every team that it took me so much time only to realize that like nobody really searches Pittsburgh Steelers 2018 fantasy football team outlook. You know what I mean? The more general you get, the more views and the more organic reach you're going to get. And it sucks. And obviously that was one thing I had to learn the hard way. Same thing with like thumbnails. <clears throat> Those are so important. And for a long time, you know. I just, I, I would take, I wouldn't even take pictures. I would just take a screen grab of the video. Sometimes it had like the play button in it. And I was like, whatever. I kind of like the fact that my face is in the picture and it's just like kind of authentic. But the more I see these other channels getting bigger and bigger, I'm like, yeah, they're really like doing good designs and getting these players in there and like making it look nice. And that was something it took me a while to come around to because I didn't really want to do that. But at the end of the day, that's so important. And when you talk about keywords, I love TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy, I actually, um, I, I bought the premium package for TubeBuddy, which is like $150 for the year, or it might be a lifetime. I'm not really sure if it, if it renews or not, but it's uh, it's probably the best tool ever. And they have a free uh, a free service for it. So anyone watching, if you, if you download TubeBuddy, it's a Google extension, T-U-B-E and then Buddy. What it does is it basically adds this whole section to the right side of a YouTube video. And it tells you what keywords a person put in and it tells you all these other random stats like estimated revenue that the person made off the video and things like that and you're so right i see some very popular youtubers and you see their keywords and it like it makes no sense it it, it they don't use you could put 500 characters worth of keywords in there and for you not to use it doesn't make sense and i uh i recently brought on uh, a kid to start doing like fantasy basketball videos on my channel he had never uploaded anything to youtube so he was very new to this and uh and i'm teaching him like you know this is what you want to do for keywords and like the first few videos he would put things in the keywords like assists points steals and i'm like okay i i, I totally understand where you're coming from but think about it from the audience point of view you don't go on youtube and literally talk type in the search bar assists, you know, like you go in, you go into the search bar and you type in things like, uh, week 17 waiver wire pickups, fantasy basketball. Like that's how you have to approach these things. And, uh, people starting YouTube, that's a great way to get notice organically because a lot of people are doing this very, 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 very incorrectly. Yeah. And another little, you know, tip here, if I want to throw one out and you give a little, a little bonus here. One thing that I used to do all the time is I would open up like an incognito window on my computer, mm -hmm. something that doesn't have any of my search history, and I would go on YouTube and I would type in 2018 fantasy football, and I would see what the first options would come up, and I would make videos based off of those options because I know that they're already towards the top of the search engine. Absolutely, yeah. I'll go on some channels that I know put up like a, a bunch of numbers. Like I wanted to see which videos of yours, you know, kind of blew up, and I know exactly which, like, what time period you're talking about when things started really rolling in for you. And the majority of the time, it's very, like, very, very general, obvious things. It's like draft day targets, top sleepers, top busts, players to avoid. It's never, like, the very in-depth, like, player, like, Jimmy Graham fantasy outlook. And that took me a year for me to, like, mess that up terribly and put a lot of work into it. Um, and, and speaking of a lot of work, like, I know you do the shorter videos. How much time would you say from, like, start to finish? So you're, like, sitting down, you're like, okay, here's the idea for this video till publishing on YouTube. What's the time frame for that? Uh, well, I was uh, lucky enough to be in an area where I live where they have fiber optic internet. So oh. I definitely upgraded that because that helps out <laughs> immensely. I can imagine. Uh, yeah, but since, since I've converted that, my average video, and I mean, we will do some videos right around the 30 minute mark on times if I'm doing, you know, shows with one of my co hosts or something like that. But on average, probably about an hour, hour and 15 minutes per video. Okay. From start to finish. Yeah. And that's me. I mean, I am, 
I'm not somebody who I'll sit. I won't sit here and I'll write an entire show notes. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get my stats written down, my key points that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to turn my camera on and I'm just going to a hashtag I use on here. I'm real big with hashtags. I put hashtags in front of everything. <laughs> uh, I just like let it flow, man, because whatever comes in my head, I'm just going to let it go because. If I'm sitting here trying to read a script, it's gonna it's gonna feel fake. And the people who are watching, right, this guy just reading it off a piece of paper or off of his laptop screen. I have no paper. You know, what I mean, I don't have anything. I just I, I, I study it, I get my key points, and I roll with it. And and I think that's that's been a big benefit. Yeah, I think it's it just comes down to self awareness and knowing what works for you. Because that's that's and I'm in no way mean that this is better, but it takes me hours and hours to do it and a lot of it's probably having to do with the internet because it takes forever to fucking like upload all these video yeah. files and whatnot but uh when i first started i actually like started doing a blog first so i kind of got used to doing that as my main piece of content so whenever i start something i blog the entire thing out and then i get on video i already have all basically the analysis in my head i'll keep my laptop kind of like right under the camera and if i need to you know break it off and be like oh what's that stat or whatever then i'll dive into it but like you said i think if you're going to read off a script or something you are there no one's going to watch you no one like wants to hear like a fake robot voice come at you because if you're reading from a script you you don't have that impulsive um improvisation right and improvisation is really like what your personality is when it comes down to it so uh so don't do that people um but at the end of the day find your style find what works for you if it's just writing down a couple stats that's fine if you're good off the dome then go for it but just make sure at the end of the day that you're still providing value and giving information from an out of bounds kind of angle to the people that are um that are watching your video yeah absolutely one of the, one of the things too is by me doing the shorter videos I mean, when I first started, I, I pushed it and I pushed it hard that I will respond to every comment on every video. Well, I did that for the longest time and to the point to where I was sleeping like two hours a day <laughs> because I was answering YouTube comments. And at some point, it just I couldn't keep up anymore. But by keeping it shorter for me personally, it, it allows the people to maybe ask a question that didn't get answered down below. And I can build the relationships with people in the comment section. So it's not just them watching some guy. <clears throat> Excuse me. They, they know that they're talking to Jake, you know? Yeah. Okay, I hear that. Yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good point of view. It's like, rather than it just being one sided, you know, you kind of get your points out quickly. And then you could have a two sided conversation quicker than if they had to watch a 60 minute video. It's a good point. Maybe I'll try. Maybe I'll start throwing out uh, some shorter videos and I'll, I'll try to surpass you. Uh, well, I mean, go for it. I mean, I, I, a lot of people are like, oh, it's a competition. You want to be the best guy. Nah. I'm not trying to be better than anybody. No way. I'm really not. You will not find you can go. I'm not going to tell anybody to do this. But you can go watch, watch every one of my, of my videos. I've never once said, hey, I, I'm an expert. You need to go. You need to listen to what I say. I always tell people I'm just supplying, you know, perspective. Mm -hmm. This is my take on it. Whether you choose to do it, it's your teams. It's your line of decisions. I'm not telling you to do anything. This is just how I see things playing. Uh, does it work out majority of the time? Yeah, at, at times. But none of us are going to be 100. percent Yeah, um, I, I I feel like the quickest tell to know that anyone is full of shit is if they ever. <laughs> tout themselves as an expert or a guru and that has nothing to do with fantasy football that's just life in general people are putting that pretense to their title that is like the quickest tell to, you know that one they they have no idea what they're talking about they're being insecure and that's their way of trying to you know push that upon you but that's a whole nother conversation now you mentioned some of your videos get a little bit longer if you have uh you know your partner and that's kyle richardson i believe unless you have uh, other people on the channel that I haven't actually seen. Now, Kyle Richardson's a, a, a personality that I've followed on Twitter for quite some time. And we had talked about this yesterday. Um, now, your videos and some of the content that you would put out um, before, you know, you said you're not current, it's not currently a, a, a partnership, I guess, anymore. But, you know, you would come on and say, presented by Roto Baller. And I was curious because I didn't exactly know what you meant by that because you know sometimes you'll have for uh let's say you know there's a lot of networks that say like podcast networks are getting very big right now for instance barstool has uh, a podcast called you know pmt or call her daddy or whatever and they'll get on and say hey this is you know pmt presented by barstool so it's like it's like uh, an umbrella basically underneath it so it's like for instance big dogs got to eat and fade the public is a podcast that me and my friends do so we're presented by big dog so i know obviously you didn't start roto baller um so tell me about that like partnership like how what does that even mean presented by roto baller I, I did one show with kyle about a year ago and he came on my channel and i kind of did a, a show similar to this where we we talked about i don't even remember now it's like underrated players or whatever it was and 
and me and him had an, like an instant chemistry. Like we were comfortable talking with each other. I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I was joking with him, asking him if he had crabs, like within like thirty minutes of the game <laughs> starting. You know, what I mean, it's just that's, like that's I'd when you know. Talked, yeah, <laughs> I've never even talked to the guy before, <clears throat> and he he contacted me a little bit later and said, "Hey, you know, there's this opportunity that we're going to be starting up a new channel over here. Are you interested?" And at the time. You mentioned in my numbers, I was like a thousand subscribers, twelve hundred subscribers. I'm like, yeah. I mean, at this point, I need some help because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so I took that on, and I, and I, you know, did a show with Kyle over there, and it was very successful. We grew that to to ten thousand subscribers in, in a few months, and and my channel, you know, went the direction that it did. And I just like, you know what, I I appreciate what I got from them. They were a sponsor of my channel. They they helped me get going, uh, but it's just something where my channel got to the point where I couldn't do two channels. I didn't have enough time, so I mean, it was a it was a, a blessing at the time, and I, I thank them for everything. And then, and then I realized after this season that it's time for me to just go out on my own. I, I've I've understood the industry enough now to kind of have a good feel for it, and that's why I got my 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 channel now. You see, it's presented by Headliner Nation, and to me, that just says this is a channel for the people. Uh, that's kind of what. The, the viewers is what I call them. It's Headliner Nation. I put a hashtag in front of it. Like I said, hashtags everywhere. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it's 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 something that's kind of just taken on this, its own identity. And now I want the people to realize that the people out there watching, they have a, they have you know stock in this channel. Uh, one thing I'm going to be starting up here pretty soon is uh, I got you know, I get in touch with some of the viewers and they can send things to me and I'm going to start displaying it around here uh, in my studio so that way they can feel like they have a say, they have a part there. They're not just watching some guy. This is actually their channel, and it's just stuff like that that uh, has really helped. Uh, like I said, I appreciate the uh, the, the presented by uh, with Rotoballer and the initial sponsorship, but it was just time for me to, to break off on my own and, and see what could happen. Yeah, so you keep driving home that point about like community, and that's always been um, that's always been like m one of my uh, key pillars to my channel or my brand or just who I am as a person. Like that's the way I wanted to build my channel from the beginning. And I will always do it this way. The same way you talked about how you wanted to answer every single comment. Uh, I was the same way. And I actually, I still try to do that as to, to the best of my ability. Of course, when you get to certain numbers, especially during the season when the engagement's just out of control, you can't do that. Um, but, you know, building a brand, building something long lasting, community is a theme that you will see an underlying theme or the foundation of any successful brand, at least nowadays, the way marketing works now, you can't build a successful brand or business without having that community as a foundation. And that doesn't have to do with fantasy football. Again, the, a lot of the things we talk about are just general points. Um, so w when you talk about like, you know, with this community and you're doing these cool things. So this almost answers my question in a sense. I was going to say like, how, how do you nurture this community that you built so rapidly? Because I built, you know, a decent sized community over a longer period of time. So I feel like I know a lot of the, a lot of the people in my community, cause I've been talking with them in the comments for, for like two and a half, three years now, but for someone who, who grows, grew so quickly, you know, um, obviously you're prioritizing community. So like, how, how do you, how do you think you're going to successfully nurture that in the future as it continues to grow? It's going to be something where I know I can't do it alone. Uh, I, I, there's just not enough me, but I, I'm going to instill that those values in this channel. Part of the reason I brought Kyle over here with me is so that I can have a little bit of help. I mean, I want to continue to be that channel that if you have a question, I'd love to be able to give you my input. Uh, me and Kyle agree on a lot of things and, and we do have another another guy that comes on. He's strictly DFS for the most part. But uh, there's so many people out there that are asking questions. I don't want them to feel like oh, I asked a question last week and I never heard anything back. So I'm not even going to ask one this week. And I think us as YouTubers know that comments are just as vital as thumbnails and everything else. We need the comments. We need the interaction. And to bring on more people, at least they'll know that they have a voice still. It may not be an answer from me directly, but it may be from Kyle. It may be from, from Ryan, our other uh, content creator. So that at least they know that their their questions are valued enough for us to spend the few minutes that it takes to, to get back to them. Now, you mentioned during the season. Yeah, I think during the season, at some points, I was getting upwards of uh, five to 8,000 comments a week. There's no way I can give you a detailed answer on every single one of them. Yeah. So there are times where I keep it short and sweet for the quick reason and I move on, but I just want to make sure that everybody knows to the best of my ability that if they come to this channel, they, they, they have a voice and, and it's going to be, it's going to be noticed. You're not just a number. You're actually a kind of, you're, you're a person, you're, you're a friend. Some of these guys I've learned to talk to even outside of YouTube, which is great.
Yeah, I agree with you there. It's it's it, it was always tough for me trying to outsource work because I always felt like I wanted to personally be the person that you know answered the question or helped you out or whatever. And what I've come to realize is that the people they just like that sense of community and they don't necessarily need me to answer it while I'm sure like a lot of them who have been following me would like me to, but I, you know, I've brought on a few other team members as well that help me create content, whether it's bloggers or other YouTube videos or my friends who do this, the fade the public podcast with me. I'm always like, I'm, I get on them and I'm like, yo, you need to make a YouTube account. And I want you commenting every time someone comments on one of our videos that we put out, I want you to comment underneath that. And it's not even like for, it's not even for selfish reasons. It's for them too, because that's, I want like the audience to get to know them as much as they get to know me and, and just feel that when they're in the brand, right, they can comment and then they'll know like me and my friend and Max and, and Nick and Noah and whoever are going to like get in there in the comment section and start talking shit to them. And, and that's just like the, the feel of the community. And I want them to always have that. And, you know, just segueing into more of like back end stuff, you always need things to help you out, whether it is these these team members um, that answer the comments or if it's someone doing the video editing for you do you have any um, I guess technical whether it's hardware or software that you really really rely on now I know you brought up TubeBuddy and that was going to be one of the first ones I mentioned I absolutely love TubeBuddy so again anyone starting out on YouTube uh, they have a free one uh, a free plan that's really really good you definitely don't need the paid plan but if you're more serious into YouTube like I am uh, the paid plan is also awesome um, so talk to me about like some of the software or other hardware that you use and that you would suggest. And, and just to prove a point kind of also, and maybe I'm throwing my cheapness out here, but I use the free <laughs> version of TubeBuddy. Yeah. And to me, it, it, you don't get all the features, obviously, but I got enough to, to learn what it is that it's looking for. Uh, OBS, OBS is 95% of all of my shows now. It got to the point where my editing was taking so long, adding in little, you know, your icons, your logos, whatever it was. It's a lot easier for me to build a you know a scene in OBS and just roll with it. Uh, outside of that, I use a free editing software called Shotcut. I mean, it, it's basic, it's simple. I downloaded it off the internet. Uh, I watched a few videos on it, and I would you know record a, a quick video, and then I would just mess around with the different filters and all kinds of stuff until I figured out what it was that 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 worked for me. Shotcut OBS by far the two things that I use more than anything else. Yeah, I'm with you there too. Like I, I use iMovie still to this day. I use iMovie. It's the free editing software that comes on uh, on MacBooks. Um, I used the, the free TubeBuddy for the first like two, two and a half years and I just upgraded this year. Um, a lot of like, actually, you know, like it's not really even that much better than, than the free version. And that's a lot of the things that you'll find. And uh, for, for any of you guys that are unfamiliar with OBS software, that's, um, it, that's, a screen capture software or a streaming software basically that's what we are currently recording this on right now so the way you build the footer on the bottom here where you see my twitter handle and jake's twitter handle on the left side over there and our little logos that's built on this obs software and that's also free and all of these tools that you can find are free and it's just like it's a matter of when you start you figure out like what it, what is it that you need right you just literally type that into google it's like i want to screen record my video or whatever and google will pop in 17 different good items and you just mess around and see what works for you but when you're starting something up and i actually i put out bi-weekly vlogs just like capturing the behind the scenes of a lot of stuff i do the last one i did was talking about my expenses and uh, my expenses from like software, whether it's like email marketing services and things like that, have definitely gone up considerably over the last year or so. But for like two years, I pretty much bought into almost nothing. And I think when you do start, you could be at the bare minimum. And the only thing you have to really invest is your time for a long time, you know? So um, I, I think those are all like really good suggestions when it comes to software editing video editing you can get something for free when it comes if you need screen capture obs uh will work for you TubeBuddy is great for for that um but really the capital expense uh, on the front end is very very cheap when you're starting out yeah i mean i even to this day i don't go out and buy these big expensive pieces of equipment i think i started my entire setup for 500 dollars. that was everything that was two microphones the mic stands camera whatever it was the basics from the beginning 500 that's all i put in for about two years yeah 
I mean, and, you know, there's was, was a blank white ball wall behind me, and everybody's like, dude, can you get some decorations or something? It's a little boring. <laughs> so then I went out and spent some money. Yeah, I, that, that's what it is. It's like you, you do the bare minimum until you feel you need to upgrade, but there's a lot of people who are kind of stuck by perfection, and they think in the beginning it needs to be amazing or it needs to be perfect, uh, otherwise it's not going to work. And I, I promise you at the end of the day, your content, the good content you put out, the, the value that you give off, is what's gonna be what keeps people around, right? You guys are not staying in my videos because I put a fucking Chance the Rapper poster behind me. You're staying because you appreciate the information I give out to you. And I kinda wanna segue into that. That's a key pillar of, of my channel, right? When I set out to do YouTube, I was always like, I'm always gonna be myself. I'm always gonna be super authentic, whether that drives some people away, like me cursing in my videos, I could care less. If someone's like, you curse too much, like I'm gonna unsubscribe, I'm like, please, like good, I'll literally comment under that, I'll be like, good riddance, like go, like you're not the right audience member for me. So that was one of the things, like being very authentic, production value, like when you talk about that, I, I just got this light, lighting in my in my room for the first time in like three years. I didn't get a, I didn't have a microphone. I was just talking into my camera that didn't have a microphone for three years. So there, it's all these like content production things that I didn't value as much as giving good information. And that was always gonna be one of my key pillars was I was gonna give the best and most detailed information that I could possibly give about a player and try to see things from both sides. So like those are some of my key pillars. And I know like the fantasy footballers, when they started out, theirs was kind of the opposite. They were like, we wanna make sure that we have the highest production value uh, starting out from our videos. So when you started out, did you have anything in terms of like values that you wanted to start with or, or did those kind of grow over time into your channel? I mean, for the most part, I mean, I know that I wanted it to be fun. I started this as a hobby. I didn't expect it at the time to turn into what it has turned into. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I always wanted to be who I am. And, you know, I have two kids that are, are hopefully sleeping right now. <laughs> but uh, I, I want them to be able to watch it, too, because my son's getting to that age where he's watching it. He's getting interested in fantasy football. And, and I wanted it to be something that anybody could watch. Now, do I care if you like it or not? I mean, not really. I mean, no. I'm not going to change because somebody doesn't like it. It's going to be what it is. And and I think if people want to leave trolling comments, which I'm sure you get all the time also, <laughs> to me, I my, like to My favorite type of comments, bro. My yeah, favorite. Yeah, because you know what? If you're going to troll comment on my channel, I'm going to respond to you because the more comments I get from you, the, the, the more it's going to you know bump up that algorithm for me and I'm going to get more views. Hell so yeah troll away you know I'm, I'm not worried about it i'm not gonna lose sleep because i offended joe blow down the street who lives somewhere else. i don't care uh i'm not gonna get 100 percent right I'm, I'm sure you get those two as people oh well you were wrong about this guy <laughs> well great i can't see the future you know what i mean I, it is what it is um uh, but i'm always gonna be who i am and it's, it's always gonna be something that is available for anybody of any age to watch uh and it's going to be fun. I mean, if you come over there and check out a couple of videos, I like to have fun when I do it. Even if it's just me for 15 minutes, there's going to be humor in there and it's not going to be scripted humor. It's just going to be fun. I want somebody to come in there for 15 minutes and not think about whatever stresses they may have or whatever worries they had, or if they had a crappy day at work, whatever it was, they're going to come there and be able to laugh about something and, and move on and, and have a good time. Yeah. So, you know, you do this as a side hustle right now. Um, and I can imagine that, you know, with, with these these numbers open up a lot of opportunities for you monetarily, um, you know, a lot of doors open up when you start hitting, you know, 30,000 in your follower account, right? Because advertisers want to work with you. You could sell products and you could do all this, this kind of stuff. Now, uh, again, you said you kind of started this uh, because it, it was fun for you and, you know, your wife said that you talk about it all the time so like go go she was probably like get out of my ear and go talk to somebody to else you about anymore. it or go talk to somebody else about it yeah, yeah so <laughs> like what what do you want out of your channel now is it just like are you just still a person just in front of the camera having fun are you looking to build a seven figure business are you looking to build a very strong brand like what you know what what are you getting out of this youtube thing now the answer is yes to all of that, <laughs> but I mean, it really Facts. depends if my boss. It really depends if my real life job boss is watching right now. Uh, but this is something that I'm passionate about. Is it something right now that I'm ready to step away to full time? Not yet. Is it something that could turn into that? Ab Absolutely. And as of right now, is it something that could support you know my wife and two kids and the family? No, it's not. And I think a lot of people see, oh, you just got two hundred thousand views on a video. You just made a ton of money. No, you don't. You know, I mean, it's not that. It's not that way. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but it could turn into that. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to stay with who I am. I'm not going to vary from that. If it continues to grow at this pace, then so be it. Uh, I'll be thankful. I'll be blessed. And I'm going to continue to go on being a normal guy, you know, talking to whoever wants to talk. I'm never going to be somebody who gets too big to not still relate to his audience. And I know a lot of people probably say that, and it may be kind of cliche for me to say, but uh, you know, I, I went to the National Fantasy Football uh, Convention last year in, in Dallas, Fort Worth. And from that point forward, when I left that convention, is exactly when my channel skyrocketed. There was nothing specific that I did there. I would leave little business cards lying around in random places and you know, talk to whoever I, I could talk to and I'd meet whoever I could meet. But it, it, it just kind of happened. And I'm like, you know what? I'm never going to be the guy that can't be approached if you ever see me. Great. I'd love to talk to you. I'm not going to say I'm, I'm too good for you. I'm, that's just not going to be me. If it continues to grow and gets to those seven figures, me and you are going to go party in New York for the weekend. Hell uh, yeah. But Mark's on you, baby. Mark's on you. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, until that happens, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to remain who I am. I, I'm, I'm blessed and I never expected it to get to where it's at right now. Yeah. I, I think you're closer than you think, man. You have some serious numbers over there and you could do some damage. And you know, I think you're probably not so in tune with like the monetization side of things because it happened so quickly. And I'm sure like you were focused on getting out quality content, right? And it's hard to focus on a business side of things as well as that. Like I, I was looking at, you know, the videos and it was, it was you putting out content consistently, you know, working hard on that. And they were getting, you know, the normal fantasy football accounts. What is it? A thousand, three thousand, five thousand, five hundred. 5,500. Sometimes they'd hit like the 10,000 mark and you had this one video. And I think I wrote down the name of it here. Let me see if I have it. Hold on. Um, yeah, 2018 fantasy football must own players for 2018 draft day targets. That video was the first video. It hit 215,000 views from you pretty much overnight. Like when you, I don't know, did, when you woke up the next day, like what, what was it like? Were you like, holy shit? Or like, did, I don't know. Talk to me about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I woke up and I looked over. I was like, ah, there's something wrong with the, the YouTube studio <laughs> yeah. app. This ain't right. Because you and, don't get you don't get viral videos on, on on fantasy football, right? That's not like a thing. And that's as, basically that's as close as you're going to get with the following size that you have. Yeah, I mean, at that time of that video, I only that's right around that. I probably had about 1,500 subscribers at that time, and to have a video that go to 200,000 within the span of a couple weeks. Uh, it, I didn't really know how to handle it at the time, and that's right. why I was like, "Man, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep on going. I'm just gonna keep making videos." Even even in that video, was I 100 percent correct? No, but I mean, there's things that happen that you just can't foresee. The the video that came out after that, and I don't remember exactly. But I think it was big names to avoid in 2018, and one of my guys on there was Le'Veon Bell, and I got so much hate from all the new people on the channel. Like, man, we thought you were gonna be good, and here you are telling people to avoid Le'Veon Bell. I got hate for like a month. Well, when Le'Veon Bell didn't play, you better believe I went back to the comment section of that video and I re-commented on every <laughs> pastor that said something to me because it, it, to me it was kind of like my point was proven at that point. Yeah. Now, was that probably the best way for me to handle it? No. But at the time it happened so fast, uh, I'm like, yep, yeah, here we go. I, I got, you know, back off, go troll somebody else. But I, I think having a video that gets those amount of views – I didn't really have time to sit there and obsess over it because I already had to make more videos. Because now all of a sudden I'm like, man, is the next one going to get 200,000? Yep. And when the next one got uh, 70, 80, 90, whatever it was, it, it was almost kind of a letdown, but it was also kind of a smack <laughs> in the face to say, hey, man, you know, it's not always going to be like that. And and even right now, I mean, you're probably seeing the same thing. Fantasy football season is not going on. Mm -hmm. I started fantasy baseball this year, which is way smaller than fantasy football, but. The numbers doesn't matter about how many subscribers you really have. The numbers may not be there when it's an off season. You just have to stay, you know, stay patient, be consistent, and continue to upload videos. Because when the season comes back around, come June or July, it, it, it's our time to shine. For sure, this is this is like really the time to set foundation. And I'm actually. I'm probably working harder and putting out more content. I'm almost like four or five videos a week and like long, you know, big, long scale videos. Uh, I'm working just as hard as I was in the season because there are going to be people that want to hear that shit throughout the, the off season and they're going to come to you as opposed to the people who aren't putting it out. And if you could put, I mean, at the end of the day, you always, the, the common denominator is you always have to put out quality content that will win you over the crowd. That will help people stay. That will always like, no matter what, if you don't have that, you're not going to win. And yeah, after that big video, like your videos, you know, after that, like, yeah, they might not have hit 215 again, but they were constantly between 15 and 75,000 views, like every single video. And that's why it's like interesting to me because had you um, 
kind of shifted your mindset from like, uh, you know, just content, 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 and even offered like one product, like a draft guide for 20 bucks with the amount of views and eyes that you were getting on, you could have probably pulled in like a, a nice five figure uh, payday off that. Hey, hey Nick, there's going to be a draft guide this year. Good. I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, no. there's, there's a lot of opportunity in the space because it is so new um, and people are always looking for new personalities to follow and you know, these affiliate marketers, especially a lot of sponsorships and stuff and advertising, they're getting in at the ground floor right now. So it, it's a very good industry to get into. And there's just, there's still so much like opportunity out there. Yeah. It went from a side gig to a, a business quickly. Yeah. You I'm, know, and it, it was something that I had to kind of figure out on the fly. Cause I'm, I have a background in business, you know, in, in real life. Yeah. Wait, what but, do you, what do you do for, what do you do for work? So for the people out there like this, for how hard this guy grinds, like he, he just got home from work, told me he works 12 hour days normally. So like break that down. Yeah. I, I work, uh, I'm a, I'm an engineer for a company that I cannot name. <laughs> <laughs> do they but, know, do they know you put out YouTube videos? Yes, they do. They, okay. well, they found out when I started to get a little bit bigger, somebody stumbled across something, but, okay. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, I manage a data center here in, in North Carolina and, I work 49 hour weeks every single week. Uh, I'm married with two kids. Uh, over the season, I had the two channels to do. I was sleeping maybe three hours a night. I mean, it was not very much. Uh, what I find works for me though is is nighttime. Kids go to bed. I stay awake and work because I don't want to be that guy that's just obsessive with the business to the point of where I miss things for my kids. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that they're taken care of when they lay down and they go to bed. I come into the studio and I go to work. All right. It's not ideal for a lot of people. I think over the season this year, I was working probably 90-hour weeks for 17 weeks. Uh, I'm putting out, on average, right around 10 videos a week between two channels. Wow. It was a lot, it was a lot of work. Uh, but I also want to kind of be a role model, not just for my kids or whoever's watching, to say, you know what? If you put, you know, if you grind hard enough, if you put in the work, it doesn't really matter what your background is. You can figure it out if you have the mindset that you will succeed. I'm going to make this work. It's going to be a lot of long nights. I mean, after I get done with this show here with you, I'm, I'm going to get ready to record more shows. And that's just the way it is. I mean, I that's my lifestyle right now, and uh, I'm not going to complain about it. I do it voluntarily. I don't have to do it, but I do it because I enjoy it. And, and more than anything, I just want to be able to have to be a person that people can look at and be like, man, if he can do it, I can do it. If that middle-aged balding dude can put out some fantasy football videos, then I can too. You know what I mean? It's, it's it's nothing that I solely figured out on my own. Yeah. All you guys are engineers, man. Everyone, I feel like everyone I have on my channel that works a full-time job is always like a fucking engineer. You guys can run the numbers and do this. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Uh, I just manage people that run the numbers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sounds a lot better than it actually is. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for real, dude, like during the season... I don't think I slept for the months of July and August. And I, I mean, I planned a couple of vacations. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's why I do this stuff is so that I have time to, to do those things. But I quickly realized like July and August are not the time to plan those. And I was, um, you know, trying to have one video a day throughout the entire month of August. Cause you really got to have content pumping out at that point. Um, and if I was going away for a week or something, like I would have to do basically, you know, 14 videos in a week. I have to do that week's worth plus queue up the next week worth of videos if I'm going to be on vacation. So it's, it's, uh, it's actually much, much crazier of a grind than a lot of people probably realize in the back end. Yeah. I mean, I told my wife and kids at the beginning of the season said, Hey, I'll see you in January because Facts. that's just going to be what it is. I mean, we, I told them, I said, Hey, you know, you bear with me and come January. Uh, I told the family, I'd take them to Disney world. So we actually just went to Disney world two weeks ago but the kids would go to bed at night and I would go into the, the corporate center of the hotel and edit videos. I mean, it was, you know, it's, it, you got to be consistent and you got to be dedicated to it. If you're not going to be, you are literally wasting your time. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be rude to the people who are somewhat committed, but if you're not a hundred percent vested and committed into being successful on YouTube, you're going to really, really struggle for, for a few years. hundred percent. I didn't see any results until I was like, fuck this. I'm going to go all in and work really hard on it. And then the results started coming in, you know, and things started to finally open up. And, and that's such like, it's so true. So many of the things that you'll hear throughout these conversations are, are really cliche, but there, there's a reason that they're cliches because they're real. They work. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, the, uh, I mean, I can't work at night, man. I don't like, 
I, that, I guess you have no other choice, right? That's like the only choice you have to do, but I'm such a morning person. When I get up, that's the first thing I do. I love to be creative, and that's when most of my creative energy is there. By the time it's nighttime, like this is the most work I will do, just a, a simple one-hour conversation between you and me. Um, that's what I'll do unless I'm really pressed into actually doing a lot of work. Like I have to get it done. Normally I'll work, you know, I'll get up at seven and work from like seven to five, like very deep work, focused work. Uh, and then I'll shut off, but it's, it's really about finding out what works for you. If it's working from 3 AM to 3 PM. Cool. If it's working four hours a day, but you think that's how you do your best, best work, do that. You know, it, it, that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. There's no you know, script that you have to follow. It's just, it's, you got to find something that works for you. Yeah. And that's what I love about like the way social media is kind of evolving is because a few years ago, you kind of just looked at something and you figured, you know, this was the path that you had to go down. And now you see personalities and you see other people, like you see yourself explaining how you do your work. And, you know, people who have followed me, have seen my vlogs and they know exactly what goes on in my life and, and the style of work I do. So I think in a sense that inspires people, maybe not consciously, but they realize like, okay, you know, I can do it that way and still be successful, or I can do it that way, which is completely different. Um, and, and still be still be successful. So it's it's really like an interesting conversation to have. Yeah, and, and it's fun. It's, it's one that I enjoy talking about. I mean, like I said, I've, I've watched your channel for you know a few years, so it's great to be able to, to catch up with somebody and, and kind of share things back and forth because at the, at the end of the day, I'm not competing with with BDGE. I'm not. I mean, that's that's not my goal in life to to beat every other fantasy network out there. Uh, I'm trying to build these relationships, and it, it's something that a lot of people in the community are willing to do. There are people out there that are in it for themselves and it is what it is. But if I can meet just one person or two people or whatever it is, it, to me, it's it's worth all the time in the, in the world to do it. Yeah, hundred percent. I think for the most part, like the industry itself is a very, very friendly one. And, uh, I, I would never think that like, Oh my God, the 30,000 people that follow you are a huge threat to me. Like there are millions and millions and millions and millions of people. And there will always be new people getting interested and always be new subscribers. And they'll subscribe to both of us if they want to. It's just like, you're never, you know, Gary V has this great saying, he's like, you want to build the biggest building in town by building the biggest building in town, not by trying to knock everyone else's out. And like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't need to succeed by knocking everyone else out. Cause in the long run, you know, you're going to get exposed for, um, not putting the work in and not being actually able to build that building, you know? So, um, it's an interesting conversation, but for the most part, any of the people I've talked to from other channels are, uh, are super helpful. And they kind of look at this as not necessarily like a team thing, but, um, we're all like one giant, I guess, community, if you want to say. Yeah, I mean, there's tens of millions of people that play fantasy football. I don't need to have every single one of them on my channel. I'm more than willing to share. You know, there's more than enough for all <laughs> of us to go around. Thank you. I appreciate that, Jake. <laughs> there's more than enough to go around. It, 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 and it's not just something that you can say, I'm going to hop on to, to YouTube and I'm going to start talking fantasy football and, it, and have it be about the money. That's the one thing I will tell people. Don't make it about the money because you will be disappointed at first and you'll be – highly invested in, and you won't see that return right away so don't do it if the money is your only motivator in my opinion yeah no i mean it's not even a, an opinion that's, that's a big fact right there because nowadays the only way to sell is through branding right the the idea of selling just direct selling to consumers is dead you can't do that anymore people want to buy a story they want to buy a feeling or whatever so if you come in it for the short term you'll never build that brand that loyalty that relationship with the audience or the customer or however you look at it um so that that's a it's a horrible plan to to go into something i don't think anyone who's really been successful has i mean i'm sure there have been a few people who have like had an idea in their mind and executed for the money or whatnot but for the most part i think uh creative outlets at least um definitely speaking if you're a creative type like anyone who is building a channel or you know even building a following on instagram or whatever uh, those things are always very natural and those happen out of passion and, and, you know, the audience and, and the money follow that, but the, that's like the initial thing, um, w when you start, but we're getting really in the fields here. Let's, uh, let's, let's talk about the future. Let's talk about what you have planned for fantasy headliners. I'm sure you've kind of gotten to, I mean, you're still working very hard, but I'm sure you started to think about, um, where you see the direction of your brand going. Because like I said, you're, you're going to have a lot of new opportunity opening up now that your audience is bigger. So where do you see uh, your channel going? Are you going to be putting out new types of content or, you know, like the stage is yours? 
Uh, I mean, I, we started fantasy baseball this year, which was a first, but uh, it's something that, like I said, happens so fast. Uh, there'll be a website being launched this year. The website's currently being built. Um, the draft guide is something that I'm going to invest a lot of time into because uh, it's kind of the videos that I make now. Now I just got to structure them towards regular season type stuff. There's a lot of stuff in the works. Bringing over the help with Kyle and Ryan was you know, an absolute must for me. Yep. Kyle is a lot more fantasy baseball than I am. I follow fantasy baseball. When it comes to expertises, though, I'm not going to be the guy, type of guy that that assumes and, and makes it sound like I know what I'm talking about if I don't know what I'm talking about. If I don't feel like I can give you the best information, I'll find somebody who can give it to you. That's where Kyle comes in. Um, that in itself has been such a big help to me because, you know, behind the scenes there's so much going on. So between bringing people in, the website, the draft guide – and outside of that, really, I'm not going to oversaturate myself, which may not be the smartest of things, but I don't want to get to the point to where people are flooded, over flooded with my content because I don't want to become Ugh, another video just came out yeah. and get to the point where people are just kind of um, over it. I want it to still be something that people look forward to. So I don't expect to change too, too much. Yes, there's other avenues. I mean, to be completely upfront and honest, I didn't do hardly any social media last year i mean i i would be i would post my videos on twitter and that was i may share them on facebook yeah you know but that and that's something that's changing this year i'm going to be more active in those things but at the time by myself i didn't have time so that's the what i'm going to really focus on this this year's the social media aspect of it the, the twitter the instagram the facebook uh the website the draft guide and, and bringing on people willing to help yes the sponsorship deals come I'm not going to be quick to accept all of them. No, 90, 95% of them are, are shit. Yeah, they're, and it's a joke, and it's hard because at the beginning you're like, wow, you want to offer what? But then you realize, man, I mean, that's to me, I mean, I don't do this, like we said, for the money. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm not going to partner with somebody if I don't believe in the product that I'm going to be selling. Yep. Um, we actually just we actually just partnered with a, a website called Fantasy Football Calculator. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not. Uh, yeah, they do of course. A, lot of, a lot of preseason type stuff, and that's going to be one of the sites where we pull all of our data from. Uh, it's stuff like that that I've already used in the past that I'm going to use going forward. Okay. Yeah, keep it simple. I hear you, man. Um, I think what makes it so difficult in terms of, like, outsourcing and, um, you know, this was a big year for me in which I was trying to give out work to other people so that I could focus on what it is that's important to me. But it's like, you know, in order to grow, obviously, a one-man show is not scalable. But... The problem is like the heart and foundation of your brand is you like personal branding is everything in what we're doing right now, you know, so uh, it's not necessarily scalable. You can't scale one person. Um, so it's like it patience is really the name of the game and what we're in what we're in right now. So it's like, um, you know, focus on those other things, of course, and honestly, on your channel, if you just plug that into the beginning of your first few um, videos that, you know, a, a couple of videos that, you know, are going to do very well in the beginning of them. Just be like, Hey guys, I'm looking to bring on like bloggers or Hey guys, I'm looking to bring on like an organic social guy that wants to help build the brand. You'll get people. And that's the cool, that's the coolest part in my opinion about having an audience is you kind of have them at your disposal for things, not necessarily to give you money or to buy your products, but I'll put out a video being like, I want to bring someone on and, and help out my team and I'll get, you know, 25 emails within, within a day. And that's really, really cool that people, you know, really, really fuck with your brand. And in that sense, like, that's great because even if it's just like one off little projects, because, you know, when you're doing all these behind the scenes things, something can pop up and all before you know, it, it's like, oh, there goes an hour and a half down the drain when it's like so not important to what the like the thing that moves, you know, the chains there really. So it's like there, there's a lot of ways to go about it. Um, it's, it's an interesting industry just because there's so many dynamics and it's not like other other industries, especially like in the content game, because content moves in and out so quickly. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, sounds good what you got in the works. I think just, just keep working hard and, and good things will keep coming your way. Um, as I always do, as I try to end these videos, I like to have my guests kind of give some kind of actionable tip or advice to the audience, to someone who might be um, just starting out or thinking about starting out or, um, or anything. You know, it could be hardware, software, it could be motivation. What you got? To me... And I think you hit it right there at the very end because motivation is going to be a big thing for me. Uh, I kind of mentioned it earlier, having like a purpose and, and doing it for a reason, whether for me it's to show my kids that you can do whatever it is that you want to do if you just go put your you know, your best foot forward and give it effort. But if you can't give it that effort, if you can't put in the time to do it the right way, 
like I mentioned, it, it's just not going to work out the way that you see it in your head. You cannot just get internet famous overnight <laughs> unless you're like extremely lucky. That's like winning the lottery. You know what I mean? There's not just a lot of people just don't upload one video and get a million subscribers. It doesn't work that way. So, so stay motivated, stay focused and just keep an eye on, on the, a, a goal, set a goal for yourself, whether it's a thousand subscribers, 15,000, whatever it is, and just constantly work towards something. Don't just go out there and put out videos and just hope somebody watches it. Yeah. You know, just go out there with a purpose and, and a reason behind it. And then you'll start to find that your heart gets a little bit more involved with it. And, and you're a lot more invested in it than you, you may even think that you are right now. Yeah, and that's my favorite part about having some of these conversations, especially with someone like you or someone who's, uh, I had Addison Hayes on here who had started FF Statistics, the website, is you get into it for the passion and then all these other like aspects start to hit you and you're like, oh, you know, this is really cool. And then you start falling in love with the other parts of it that you never even saw coming. And I think at, at the end of the day, I think that's kind of why I do some of the, or I, this specific um, series, right? These interviews is because I remember when I was starting out when I was really young, like 20 years old, 21, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I knew I had like this, I don't know, this kind of like entrepreneurial trait in me. And I hate that word because I feel like it's it's used uh, in ridiculous ways nowadays. But uh, I knew I like I, I had this creative energy in me and I wanted to go out and just create and inspire people. Right. And I didn't know like where to put it or what to do. And I had just I think one day I went on iTunes, like the podcast thing and typed in like entrepreneur. And I just started listening to so many podcasts um, that were just entrepreneurs interviewing other entrepreneurs. And those like inspired me in, in ways that I had never even like thought I could be inspired. So like there are probably people in the audience that I hope and that's the goal is that they hear these and they didn't realize that maybe they had a passion for this or a passion for that. And they just kind of needed to be opened up a little bit. So at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's what it's about. Um, like you said, set that goal, reverse engineer it. What, what's going to what's it going to take to get there? Figure it out. Kind of hack the system if you need to, but work hard. Be a good person and good things will come your way. Um, and I think that's really all all we have for um, for this episode. I mean, it was awesome talking to you, man. This was a great conversation. And let the people know where they could find you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm on Twitter. You mentioned earlier, I believe you said it may be there on the screen. It's at Fantasy Headliners, F-N-T-S-Y. That's probably the most active social media that I'm on is, is Twitter. Uh, by all means, the YouTube channel, the Fantasy Headliners. Uh, also on Instagram, Facebook, it's all the fantasy headliners. But uh, more than anything, I, I would I appreciate you having me on. I mean, it was good to get uh, to finally talk to you, other than just through a, a YouTube comment or a <laughs> DM on Twitter. Um, and, and by all means, what you're doing here, uh, I remember watching when you started this series, and I thought it was a great idea. Uh, you know, kudos to you. I mean, you're you're one of the first ones that I've seen put something like this out, and it's 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 been very beneficial. I know even for for me, somebody who who's involved in it. Uh, it was a great idea and I'm just glad to be a part of it. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you coming on. Um, if you guys did enjoy, which I'm sure you, I'm sure you did. You couldn't, you couldn't have not at this point. I feel like we, we just spit so, so many big facts just came out of the mouth holes over here. So, uh, I will link all of the stuff Jake just named down below. Um, his Twitter has been hanging on the screen for a while now. So if you haven't already followed him, go do so. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, check out Jake's stuff and I'll see y'all next Monday. Peace.